time for another list. We did a top 10 worst horror movies, top 10 best horror movies, and now we're, we are going over top 10 disappointing films that could be horror or non-horror. Anything's on the table. I've seen about 50 movies this year, and this is just movies that, they're not necessarily shit, so I want to clarify that right now. I'm not saying that all these movies are terrible, and I don't recommend seeing them or buying them or whatever. It's just that these are movies that I had certain expectations for, or I was, you know, I, I wanted this, but I got that, or I wanted more of this, but, I, you know, whatever. It's just like, they're not all terrible movies, so just want to clarify that right now. And I will give you three honorable mentions right now, because I will forget if I don't do it right now. <laughs> I try to save it to, like, before number one. Like, all right, before we get to one, let me give you three honorable mentions, but if I do that, I'm going to forget, so I'm doing it right now. Cold Pursuit is my first honorable mention. This is a very wacky Liam Neeson movie. It's the weirdest tone of any Liam Neeson movie I've ever seen. It's sold by like the trailer as like this straightforward, very serious Taken movie, where like Taken and the, with the plot of like revenge. You know, like the son dies. He's got to go get revenge. Get those assholes who caused his son's death. But when you watch it, the tone, the comedy, it's fucking awful. I did not laugh at all during this. It was not the movie I was expecting at all either. And it's just the weakest Liam Neeson movie of them all. I would much rather watch like a Taken or a Nonstop. Anything else with Liam Neeson is better than this. This is just a wacky and not even a good performance by Liam Neeson. He's very wooden. Hardly any emotion from the guy. I just did not like his character. Very uninteresting film. So don't watch it. I, that's one I would say don't watch it. Uh, there, not all of them are like that. There's some good films on this list. But they, they were just still a little disappointing. A second honorable mention. This is a horror one. The Pet Cemetery remake. I do not recommend watching this one either. I would recommend watching the original because it's better. It's got the emotion. It's got the gut punch impact when that kid dies. Not like this one. When the little girl dies, there's not that setup. It's not the same impact. And I could go on and on. I already have. I got a review. And I already mentioned why I hate this movie in my top 10 worst horror movies. It is not a good remake. I would put it in a top like 15 worst horror remakes of all time. Or yeah, 15 or 20. There's a lot a lot of horror remakes especially and i haven't seen them all but i would put that one up there uh not like black christmas that's number one that would be number one black christmas all right midway this one's an okay film this is like a world war ii pearl harbor action flick by roland emmerich who did patriot he's known for making these big action movies. the patriot i think he did uh we were so we were soldiers with mel gibson i believe that was him don't quote me on that but this one was just like, meh, all right. It just felt like he only had a couple of tricks up his sleeves. And it just wasn't that interesting. It was struggling a lot of characters around. And I just didn't really care for the film all that much. It has some good CGI explosions. And it's a spectacle movie with lots of explosions and planes. Just dive bombing and shooting up ships. But it's just not that entertaining. It wasn't the level of greatness that I was expecting. And that's why it is an honorable mention. Now, let's move on to the actual top ten list. So... Number 10, this goes to a sequel in a franchise that has been going on for 30 years, and this one flopped and bombed at the box office, and critics and everyone has been shitting all over this film, and I actually gave it a positive review, and I still stick by it, but Terminator Dark Fate, it is a little disappointing. It is towards the bottom of my ranking, which tells you something. It tells you that even though I said this is like a great movie, good enough to buy, that this franchise has a lot of great quality i think they're all viable i think they're all watchable again and again but this one's still disappointing because it's like the bottom of my list i would still watch three over this one and everybody hates three but what i don't what i didn't care for about this one was just it felt like it was retreading familiar ground it wasn't really adding anything it was just the same movie again and again and it was just like all right we'll make it a Latino bag, uh, bad guy with this girl who's gonna be, you know, we'll make John Con this John Connor a girl. It's just part of this whole like, you know, making girls the main pr uh, protagonist, like badass, and I'm all for that. But this character, this girl, I forget her name. She's forgettable. I wasn't on board with her. I didn't connect with her. They do that John Connor thing at the beginning where they shoot John Connor. Everybody's pissed about that. I was okay with it, but they don't do any justice with it. Like they don't. 
Like, why? That was not necessary by the end of this film. It's it's part two all over again, basically. It's not anything different. It's not anything we haven't seen before. And this main girl that we're supposed to follow now in Route 4 instead of John Connor is not a great replacement. So I'm all for a strong female character. I love all kinds of movies like that. But this was not a good, strong female character to follow. It was just very disappointing. So yeah. Terminator Dark Fate, you're number 10. Number 9, another strong female character in a lead movie, and it's not because I'm sexist, Captain Marvel, Marvel, whichever side it's going to be on, did not care for this movie, but hey, I don't care for any Marvel or DC movie for that matter. Have you seen any superhero movies on any of my list yet or in the future? Not really. I'm just not into the whole superhero thing. And this one is definitely the most lackluster of them all, in my opinion. And the whole cat thing, I think the cat thing was the most entertaining, fun part of the whole film. It had the most laughs from me, was the cat turning into an alien at the end, scratching Nick Fury's face. That's all I remember. It was just a very lackluster Marvel movie that wasn't as good or near the quality of any of the predecessors in this MCU of like 22 films. Number eight goes to Knives Out. This was a very unique whodunit where they tell you who, uh, what really happened. Not necessarily who done it, kind of ish. They tell you that like 20 minutes or so into the film, and you're like, oh shit, what's the rest of this movie gonna be about? Like, what's the oh, uh, who paid uh, Daniel Craig, aka Foghorn Leghorn? I, I, I was not crazy about his accent. Some people say they liked it. I did not like that accent that he was doing. But what makes this film disappointing is that. In the comedy department, the comedy was weird, it fell flat, and in the mystery aspect of it, it was not that intriguing to me. So it was just like, eh, still a good movie. I would recommend seeing it, but it's just, it was very disappointing at the end of the day. And that's why it's in the disappointing list. It was just not the level that I wanted it to be at. And we got all these great actors in it, and I wanted more from them, but it seems to focus more on this one actress who I'm not that familiar with. Number seven goes to a movie from the people who brought you A Quiet Place and everybody in the horror community was propping this film up, saying, singing its praises and when, by the time I saw it, I was like, what is everyone talking about? And that's Haunt. This movie uh, doesn't even have that much body count or gore to it and that's what this movie is made for, right? I mean, I like the premise, but it's not unique, but I like it. It's something that was done the year before with Hellfest and all kind of Bloodfest, you name it. There's so many movies like this where people go to a haunted attraction and the haunted attraction is real. The psychopaths are real, like a funhouse massacre. We got that premise here once again, but they make things a little unique-ish with the whole, like, their mask is that how their face really looks underneath, like a ghost face underneath the ghost mask or a clown face underneath the clown mask, the devil, blah, blah, blah. That's interesting. That's a different twist i guess but it's just like in the kills department very lame in the scares department very lame and the only thing i could say good about this movie was what i just kind of said was that uniqueness with the mask thing and the set designs and the way the movie looks it's an okay like movie to watch every halloween because it's got that halloween vibe ish but it's just not that good of a horror movie it was okay but just that nothing about that it was just decent godzilla king of the monsters this movie is just awful in the character department and the monsters are the only thing when they're on screen you're like, hey, this is all right. But then the characters get back on screen and you're like begging for them to just fucking leave. Just give me more monster action. We're not here to see you, Kyle Chandler or Farrah Farmiga. We're here to see the monsters fight. And when you see them fight, it's like far away or it's like dark the way it's lit and it's just to hide the CGI that was probably terrible. But the CGI is okay for the most part, but the characters weighed this film down. It was disappointing. Their motivations, the reasons, what they do, some of their decisions were fucking crazy. The characters needed to be rewritten in this movie to be interesting so you could be on board with them or at least be entertained when the monsters were on screen at least. All right? So yeah, just disappointing. Number four goes to another movie that was mismarketed like Cold Pursuit, and that is Happy Death Day to You. This is a good sci-fi dramedy, drama comedy, but not a good horror movie like it was kind of advertised like, like the first one. It is not horror at all, and a lot of the jokes are very hammy and very fourth wall breaking. I 
do not like that fourth wall breaking, which she's like falling from the sky and just conveniently lands in front of the bench that her boyfriend is at, flipping off the camera, like flipping you off, like, haha, we got your money already, bitch. Did not care for that at all. There's like no focus on the whodunit aspect of the film, and that's what's so freaking interesting about the first one. That's the intriguing thing, like, why is this happening? Who's the killer? And they come, that takes a back seat in this one, and by the time the killer's revealed, you're like, I, kind, I already knew, and I didn't give a shit like, about the whole like, whodunit thing. It's just not that good of a movie, but it's still watchable. It's still somewhat entertaining. I like Tree, the main actress, Jessica Roth, and here she does a damn good job. She gives a very emotional performance. It's still a decent movie. I have it because I'm a collectionist. I have part one, so I have to have part two, but I much prefer part one over this one. So it that's why this is very disappointing and on my disappointment list. Number four goes to 47 meters down, Uncaged. Not two, because this has nothing to do with the first one. These are different sharks and different people at a different location. And these actors are all shit for the most part. You got Sylvester Stallone's daughter in here. I think she was the worst performance in these sharks they try to make it different so they're like albino sharks with white eyes and the setting is creepy and the way it's shot and i like this director he did a great job with the first one i thought that one built really great tension i really love 47 meters down it's one of my top five favorite shark movies of all time so you can see why this one was such a disappointment if that if i was coming off of that like great film and i went to this i was like okay this is just nowhere near that level so yeah, that's why it's on this list. It was a disappointment. There's, I just, they should have just went for the R. Just make this one stand out from that one. Up it. Make it more gory. There's one scene where Sylvester Stallone's daughter gets ripped apart, but it's implied, but you don't see it. But yeah, the characters were lacking. They were shitty actors. And the sharks, it was just bad, shoddy CGI here and there. The th I like that part at the end, though, where they're like, in that one open water area outside of the cave and there's like a thousand sharks or something like it was that was okay i like that scene but yeah disappointing just was nowhere near that level of part one number three goes to a movie that yet again was mismarketed as like the female john wick movie and that's anna or anna however you want to pronounce it i'll say anna this movie was just awful all right awful plain and simple the premise the story not original the, the characters don't give a shit, just bad, all right? The story jumps all over the place, trying to do some Pulp Fiction thing, like, oh, let's extend this scene. Oh, we pulled the rug out from you. Twist, reveal, reveal. I don't care, I'm not interested. The characters suck. The, the story is not interesting. It's just a spy who doesn't want to be a spy. There's two action sequences in the film, the one at the restaurant, the one at like the KGB place at the end, and they're in the trailer. It, like the whole scene plays out in the trailer so they really hammer it home like this is what you can expect all this action the way it's shot and it, this, the action is shot good but all the greatness all the entertainment of the film is in that trailer so if you want to watch this movie just watch the trailer and save yourself the 90 minutes number two goes to a film that is written and directed by somebody who has written and directed my favorite movie of 2018 and that is Midsommar. This is not a shit film. I do not hate it. But it was disappointing because of how much I loved Hereditary. This movie has a very weak plot to me. Like, it's just, okay, a group of kids go to festival and the festival people have weird traditions. And now they're all dead except for one. Like, okay, whatever. It's just not done in a way where I'm really intrigued like i am in hereditary hereditary is just so messed up and just on the edge of your seat like uncomfortable and you're like oh my god what's gonna happen next like what the hell's going on i need answers throughout like that movie was just great to me and the, people hate the ending but i like it this movie i'm just like okay weird shit's happening weird shit's happening more weird shit's happening for no reason people are making weird noises with their mouths <sighs> And then people are doing random things hitting people in the head with a hammer there's some good gore in here don't get me wrong there's some fun uncomfortable laughter moments definitely like the sex scene everybody at the theater was laughing their asses off me too there's some fun moments in here it's definitely a movie you want to watch with a group of friends but it was just disappointing to me especially coming off of that hereditary high i was like this is nowhere near that level it's a little longer than it needs to be it's that beginning could have been trimmed down some it's just 
by the end of it, just was very lackluster. But number one, the most disappointing movie that really made me leave the theater with a sour taste is Angel Has Fallen. I love the first two. The second one isn't as good as the first one. It's definitely more uh, B action movie-ish. Uh, but the first one I really enjoy. It was very, very awesome. Love Mike Banning's character. Just his character, his personality. You can root for him. He's a great uh, protagonist. But this movie says, fuck that guy. You're not going to get that personality. And we're just going to handcuff him and just send him running through the woods hanging out with his dad and it's gonna be taken three we're gonna be taken three and there's gonna be hardly any action at all we'll give you this bad guy who's completely uninteresting and generic and you know who it is we'll act like it's a who done it you don't know who betrayed him yes we do we're not idiots that was not a twist at all the twist are fucking done horribly they're not executed in any way where it's actually like a surprise like oh my gosh that person really and then just mike banning's character in this movie don't give a crap anymore about them. This movie's action, poorly shot, poorly edited. Did not care for this film at all. What a disappointment. It ruins the trilogy. This could be a great trilogy like the John Wick trilogy. Now it's a trilogy with that bad apple in it. The one that I will skip always. And that's my top 10 disappointments of 2019. What films disappointed you in 2019? Put yours in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Like and share this video with all your friends and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, I'll feed your scene.